So we're going to talk about hydrates or hydrated salts. This is a slightly different kind of compound than you're familiar with, uh, but it's not that difficult to understand. Uh, it's just a, a, a variation on something you already kind of know. So uh, a hydrate, hydrated salts are ionic compounds, usually. There are instances of hydrated molecular compounds, but usually they're ionic compounds, hence salts, uh, that trap water molecules inside their crystal structure as they're crystallizing, uh, because most of the time these crystallizations happen in water. So as they're crystallizing, the crystals are coming together and they're trapping water molecules inside. Okay, um, There are quite a few common compounds that do this. Not all do it, but, but a number of them do. The water molecules that are trapped are called the water of hydration. Okay, um, they're not going to react with the ionic compound. They're not chemically bound to it. They're just stuck in there. They're just trapped in there. The, the salt doesn't look wet or anything. It's just a regular powder. As a matter of fact, um, when you took regular chemistry, you worked with one of those salts, copper sulfate, copper 2 sulfate. Uh, is a hydrated salt, and uh, it's just a blue powder, that's all. So that's copper 2 sulfate, um, hydrated copper 2 sulfate. So as the copper sulfate ions come together to crystallize, uh, they trap water molecules inside. Okay. Now we can indicate this by writing the formula a little differently. Okay. So the formula for copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate is written CuSO4 and then a dot and then 5H2O. Now that 5 is not an arbitrary number, it's important. Okay, The CuSO4 part, the part in blue here, uh, that's called the anhydrate. An, as a prefix, means without. So anhydrate means without water, uh, or sometimes it's called the anhydrous salt. That's the ionic compound part, that's the salt part. And then the water part at the end after the dot, that's the water of hydration. Okay, now the five that's written there is important, and like I said, it's not just an arbitrary number, it's a specific number. It's the number of water molecules that actually get cut, caught into one of these, what we call a unit cell of a crystal. Or an easier way to think about it, or more useful laboratory way of thinking about it is, it's the number of moles of water that gets stuck in one mole of the anhydrate. So as one mole of CuSO4 ions come together, that's a mole of Cu plus 2s and a mole of SO4 minus 2s. As they crystallize, as they form solid compound, we get five moles of water trapped in that crystal. Okay. What that means is that we have a nice little conversion factor here. There are five moles of water for every one mole of CuSO4. And since we know how to use moles and mass, this makes for really easy analysis of the hydrate. In other words, if I wanted to find out how much water was trapped in a hydrate, um, I could analyze it and I could come up with this ratio, moles of water to one mole of anhydrate. And whatever that moles of water is, that's the number that goes after the dot. Okay, So how we analyze a hydrate, it's very simple. We need to figure out how much water is in there, how much water is trapped. And the easiest way to analyze it, uh, first we'll mass the hydrate. Okay, So we'll figure out how much hydrate we're starting with. And then we'll drive off the water of hydration. Driving off the water of hydration is really easy. You just heat it. You heat it, you cause the water to turn to, to water vapor, steam, and it goes away, comes out. And then mass the anhydrate that's left. And obviously the difference in the masses of the two is how much water there was. And then you can do the appropriate calculations and figure out how many moles of water per mole of anhydrate there was. Okay, It's pretty simple to do. Now, how do you know that you've driven off all the water? Well, with copper sulfate, it's really easy because copper 2 sulfate changes color as you dehydrate it. So the blue color of copper sulfate here on your left, uh, it turns to a white powder. On the right, the right is the anhydrous copper 2 sulfate, dehydrated if you want to call it that. Okay, so, um, but you have to be able to see by looking at it that all of that blue color is gone. It's a little hard to do maybe sometimes, especially if you don't see colors all that well or if you're not careful. Um, so maybe a color change isn't the most reliable way. Let's look at another hydrate. Here's magnesium sulfate, hydrated magnesium sulfate. Um, which one is the hydrate and which is the anhydrate? Uh, I don't know. They both are white powders. 
Turns out the one on the left is the hydrate, and the one on the right, that's the anhydrate. But, you know, just looking at it, you can't really tell. So how am I going to know if this happens to be the hydrate that I'm analyzing? How do I know if I'm done? How do I know if I've gotten rid of all the water? In the case of the copper sulfate, I might have an edge because I might be able to say, well, there's absolutely no blue color left, so I must have gotten it all. But if they're both white, how do I know? So that's something to think about. I'm not going to give you the answer to that. I want you to think about that uh, as we go forward and see if you can figure out what would be an appropriate way of figuring out if you've gotten rid of all the water. Okay, so pretty simple. Uh, you'll do it in lab and uh, good luck.